In football and all sports, it's not just talent that separates the best from the rest. It's teamwork and practice. Success on the football field comes from everyone working together. But for a medical team, there is no second down. There's one chance for a successful rescue of an injured athlete, and it may be a life-saving one. I know from personal experience how important it may be when someone's well-being is in the balance. No play in any sport is more important. Your commitment to these guidelines may one day be life-saving. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I'm the head athletic trainer. We're going to go through our medical timeout today. We're going to go over important procedures for the game today. So if anyone has any questions at any time, please feel free to let me know. These are our paramedics who have trained with us, and they're familiar with all of our procedures for packaging student athletes and moving student athletes. For both games and practice alike, the medical timeout outlines the game plan for a medical rescue. Like any good game plan, it leaves no detail uncovered. All necessary equipment, protocol, and procedures unique to the event and location must be clearly understood. The highest priority is that all personnel on site are adequately trained and have rehearsed the techniques necessary to protect the spine of the injured athlete. Now I'm going to assume C-spine stabilization for me, Matt. All right. In every situation, cervical spine stabilization is always the first action taken and must be maintained throughout the rescue. Commands for transfer techniques should be given by the rescuer stabilizing the cervical spine. Okay, we're gonna do a three-person pull. Trey, you're gonna be on the feet. Darren, you're gonna take the hips. I'll take the shoulders. Christina's gonna have the count. When we go up, then you guys slide the board in and then she'll count us down. Everyone ready? Yes, sir. On you, Christina. The log roll technique is the most commonly used maneuver to transfer a spine injured athlete. Ready, three, two, one, down. Okay, now reposition. We're going to do a slide. We need to go six inches up and to his right. Everyone ready? Ready. Christine, on you. Three, two, one, move. Good. Okay, we're gonna do a two-segment push roll to get him on the board. Trey, you're gonna have the feet. Darren, you're gonna have the hips. I'll take the shoulders. We're gonna go halfway. We're gonna hold and reposition our hands, and then we're gonna roll them all of the rest of the way onto the board. Then we'll do a slide to position him. All of the commands are gonna be with Christina. When you're ready, Christina. On my count to halfway. Three, two, one, half. Three, two, one, down. Options for the number of personnel and board positions may change depending on local resources, skill, and practice. Scenario training is a required part of any comprehensive emergency medical action plan. Okay, we're gonna start with the head. Secure that arm in place. The scoop stretcher may be utilized to lift and transfer a supine athlete. Everyone get in position. We're going to do a single roll onto the board. It's going to be on Christina's call. Jack, you take the feet. Darren, you take the hips. I'll take the shoulders. We're in position, Christina, whenever you're ready. Ready, three, two, one, roll. Okay, we're gonna slide him up into the right, about six inches. One, two, three, When access go. to an injured athlete is limited or restricted, it's important to prepare. Be sure to rehearse an emergency medical action plan that suits the environment. Okay, everyone, position yourself for a lift. Trey and Jackie will take the feet. Darren, you get the hips. Matt and I will take the shoulders. When everyone's ready, Christina's gonna count us up. We're gonna lift six inches. Then she's gonna count us back down once the board's in place. Whenever you're ready, Christina. Three, three two, one, up. Three, two, one, down. Great, let's get his face mask off. 
Access to the airway should always be established by removing the face mask or the helmet prior to transport, regardless of the current airway status. Face mask removal will vary helmet to helmet. It's important to rehearse face mask removal with each type of equipment the team uses. Familiarize yourself with the equipment the athletes are wearing, know how the face mask is attached, and have a combined tool approach for face mask removal. Okay, we're gonna start by removing his equipment, starting with his jersey. We're gonna do a T-cut, sleeve to sleeve, and then chest down. The highest priority when considering helmet and shoulder pad removal is maintaining circulation, airway, and breathing. In some situations, the decision may be made to remove equipment on the field prior to transport. And now shoulder pads. The decision to remove equipment prior to transport should be based on a variety of factors, including the medical status of the injured athlete, type of protective equipment worn, and the training and experience level of rescuers in equipment removal. Chin strap. <clears throat> Chin strap. Whether it's a log roll, scoop stretcher, or multi-person lift as demonstrated here, the medical professional in charge and the resources available determine the transfer technique. Now I'm gonna assume C-spine stabilization for me, Matt. All right. I have the C-spine. I want you to pull the helmet out on three. One, two, three. Good, now everyone get in position for a lift. I'm going to give you back C-spine stabilization. You count me off when you're ready. I have, have C-spine. We're going to lift on three. One, two, three. Lift. Down on three. One, two, three. I have the C-spine. I'm gonna remove the helmet on three. One, two, three. We'll remove the shoulder pads on three. One, two, three. I have C-spine. We'll call her. Now I'm going to assume C-spine stabilization for me, Matt. All right. I have stabilization you can release. I'm going to have you remove the helmet on the count of three. One, two, three. Good. Now everyone get in position for a lift. We're going to lift on three. One, two, three. Lift. Down on three. One, two, three. Okay, everyone, get in position. We're gonna lift. Christina, you'll have the call. On Christina's call, we're gonna lift him straight up. Three, two, one, lift. Three, two, one, down. The number of personnel needed to perform a lift and transfer depends on an athlete's size as well as environmental conditions. Hi, Doc. I've got a 22-year-old male patient here without any medical history or meds. Uh, this afternoon, obviously, involved in... In most game. cases, spine-injured athletes should be transported to a predetermined trauma center with the capability to deliver immediate and definitive care. If such care is not readily available, spine injured athletes should be transported to the closest appropriate hospital for stabilization. Heart rate of 80, it was a sinus rhythm on the monitor without ectopy. His respiratory rate was 20 with clear bilateral breath sounds. His skin was warm and dry. His eyes were mid, equal, and reactive. On our exam, we noted him to have some midline tenderness upon palpation of his C-spine, and additionally, he was complaining of a numbness tingling and weakness in all four extremities. Okay. We placed him on a backboard, immobilized his head, uh, we started a line of ringers and uh, have brought him to your in that situation. Great. Okay. 
Hello, sir. My name is Dr. Mitchell. What's your name? My name is Justin. So, team, I know he's, his airway is intact. He's talking to me, and he doesn't look like he has any respiratory distress, so I think his breathing is okay as well. And he has a regular and full pulse, so we believe his circulation is also intact. So, Justin, what we're going to be doing here is remove the tape and the blocks that are next to your head. So go ahead, guys, and do that. Step in, and we'll cut the tape off, and then we'll cut the chin strap. I have assumed control of the patient's head. Okay, go ahead and cut the chin straps. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the chin strap. We'll go ahead and remove the jersey. So we'll do a T-cut. And by that, I mean we're going to go shoulder to shoulder and then down the center. And then we'll focus on the straps of the shoulder pad. So, OK, and then down the center. OK, great. And once we're done with the jersey now, we'll focus on the shoulder pads. And so we'll take care of the axillary straps of the shoulder pads. So go ahead and cut the axillary strap. Jason, if you could then cut the center strap down, down the middle. And then we'll open up the shoulder pads once you've completed that. OK, Rob, why don't you go ahead and get in position to assume cervical spine immobilization? I have C-spine stabilization you can release. And then you will direct the operation of getting the helmet and the pads off. We're going to remove the helmet on three. Get in position. One, two, three. Great. Now we'll remove the shoulder pads again on three. One, two, three. Bring this posterior cervical collar in. Rob, I now have control of the head. You may release. We'll apply the anterior portion of the cervical collar. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the actual removal of the helmet and the shoulder pads, and we'll begin the process of transferring control of the C-spine over to you. Cervical spine, spine stabilization, stabilization is vital to maintain throughout equipment One, removal. One, two, three. Great. Now we'll remove the shoulder pads again on three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and lower him to the ground, lower him back down. And Rob, you may transfer control of the C-spine to me. I've got it. And then we'll apply the anterior portion of the cervical collar and Velcro the straps. Okay, thank you team. Now we'll resume normal care of this patient. In sports, success is the result of teamwork and practice. The same is true for the medical team, but the stakes are much higher. Successful management of a C-spine injury can not only save the day, but it can save a life.